is a place between heaven and hell where truth and myth become an act of will. Macabre Hill. The heartland of America seems like a stable enough place, doesn't it? Agriculture, industry, natural beauty, a great place to raise your kids. But the Heartlands suffered a heart attack in the winter of 1811 to 1812. And the truth of the matter is, this area is anything but stable. What's at fault is the New Madrid Fault Line. It's a 150-mile-long fault system stretching from Cairo, Illinois, down through New Madrid, Missouri, and into northeastern Arkansas. The best-known major series of quakes along the New Madrid Fault Line happened starting December 16, 1811, at 2.15 a.m., with more big honkin' quakes on January 23, 1812, and February 7, 1812. How powerful were the major quakes? Well, the 1906 San Francisco earthquake hit an estimated 7.7 .7 on the Richter scale. The strongest of the four New Madrid quakes was 8.1. Might not seem like so much more, but the thing is, every full point on the Richter scale equals 10 times the previous point. So when you compare the New Madrid 8.1 to San Francisco's 7.7, .7, it's four times stronger. The country was young at the time and the area wasn't settled, so unlike San Francisco, the loss to life and property was relatively low for such a devastating series of quakes. However, for the people who were there at the time, it was brutal. Eyewitness reports say, The earth was horribly torn to pieces. The surface of hundreds of acres was from time to time covered over various depths by the sand which issued from the fissures. The water that had filled the lower cavities rushed out in all quarters, bringing with it an enormous quantity of carbonized wood, which was ejected to the height of from 10 to 15 feet and fell in a black shower mixed with the sand which its rapid motion had forced along. The roaring and whistling of the air escaping from the earth seemed to increase the horrible disorder of the trees blown up, cracking and splitting and falling by thousands at a time. According to the book On Shaky Ground, The New Madrid Earthquakes of 1811 to 1812 by Norma Hayes Bagnell, an area of 30,000 square miles had the land surface lowered from 6 to 15 feet. In a smaller area, it was raised. A fog enveloped in areas as lakes suddenly drained when the land was lifted or stinking geysers of sand, burnt wood, and hot water shot into the air and formed new lakes where the land had lowered. There were reports that the Mississippi River flowed backwards. Now, this is not quite right. What happened was monstrous chunks of bluffs along the river plunged into the water, causing huge waves in all directions. Also, where the land lifted, it actually caused the Mississippi to back up on itself, which would look like it was running backwards. Riverboats were swallowed, islands disappeared, towns flooded out, and the quakes changed the course of the huge Mississippi forever. New Madrid, for which the fault line is named, sat on a bluff overlooking the river. But the bluff was a soil bluff, not rock. When the quake hit, half the town disappeared down into the turbulent water. According to the book The Earthquake That Never Went Away, chimneys fell in Cincinnati, sidewalks buckled in Baltimore, church bells rang in Boston, tremors were felt in two-thirds of the U.S. and even in Canada, Mexico, and Cuba. To this day, the New Madrid Seismic Zone produces over 200 quakes a year. There's definitely heart trouble in the heartland. Let's just hope we don't shake things up anytime soon. The difference between right and wrong. Ah! Ink stains. Ink stains. If you head out of Kansas City and go east on I-70, once you get past Columbia, prepare yourself. You're entering ghost country. Mary Collins Burreal has written the book, The Haunted Boonslick, Ghost, Ghouls, and Monsters of Missouri's Heartland. In this brand new book, Mary will share with you all kinds of things you can find on your way. Things like the Piazza, a winged water spirit from the American Indians, painted on the bluffs of the Mississippi and Missouri rivers. Poetry written by Patience Worth, who happened to be dead when she wrote it. The well-known and well-haunted Lemp Mansion in St. Louis. No headless horseman, but a headless horse. The ghost of Guinea Sam, who supposedly was blasted in the Missouri River by a cannonball. Oh, there's much more. The Boonslick is where you'll find it, and her book is where you'll read about it. With us right now is Mary Burreal, the author of The Haunted Boonslick, Ghosts, Ghouls, and Monsters of Missouri's Harland. Mary, tell us, wh what exactly is The Boonslick? Well, The Boonslick was 
and remains sort of an undefined area, um, but the area between essentially um, St. Louis and probably west of Howard County, west of Cooper County. The name of it came from the fact that there was a salt lick uh, in the center of the state, and it was uh, Daniel Boone's son who um, started to work the salt lick. How did you discover the stories that you have in this book? How did you find them? I am an historian, and I uh, do a lot of work on, on Missouri history, and very often you'd be going through an old county history or a newspaper, and you would see something about a spirit, or they left this house because of knockings and, and murmurings that they had heard, and I would file all those stories um, and put them aside, and eventually I realized I certainly had more than enough for a book, and uh, a lot of stories that had not been included in other stories of um, studies of ghosts in Missouri. So were you always interested in spooky stuff, or did this just kind of grow as you did your research always, and found them? Always, I, I want to know what was in the closet. I apply, you know, sort of the rules of doing history to the paranormal, and I do look for some rigor, and, and I do use research techniques. Um, who were these people? Did they actually exist? Um, what would a skull have meant other than black magic or something. Um, I think sometimes the history is as interesting as the possible paranormal. Um, I think there are enough ghosts out there and personally enough true stories. What was the scariest thing that you ran into as you were researching this book? I um, was going down to Overton, which was an old river town in Missouri, and it was a uh, summer's evening. I was taking some friends. I was showing them where um, a couple of, of the ghost stories happened between Boonville and Overton. And one famous story is the black carriage. Um, to make a long story short, it's a haunted carriage, and if uh, people would follow it and end up in the river, um, or dead, or off the road, or a, a symbol of evil. We were heading down towards Overton, and finally somebody said, oh, I want to stop the car, can I just get out and look? I stopped the car, and not 10 feet in front of us, all of a sudden, a train comes zooming through, and there was no, there were no light warning, there was no sounding of this train, it just went through. And aside from the fact that it, it scared the living daylights out of us, and we felt ourselves very lucky, I remember thinking, sure, and we were out looking for the black carriage. It, it was spooky. The stories that are in your book, can you share with us uh, one of your favorites? Oh, probably the Blind Boom, John Blind Boom, who was um, a ragtime uh, and classical music pioneer. He, he lived in Columbia. He was born and raised in Missouri. He died in poverty, but had been the, one of the uh, most well-paid performers, and he was African-American, unheard of at that time, an amazing man. So um, he was at the height of his fame in the, 19, uh, the 1890s, and, and well after World War I. Um, he passed away in Missouri. He's buried in Columbia, and he had a piano he loved, and the story of the piano itself deserves a book, but um, for the first years after his death, it had been given to one of the schools in Columbia. There was a story that um, a mother and her daughter told to a reporter that they knew it was Blind Boone playing, that they'd walk by the school and they would hear Blind Boone playing the piano. He, she had never heard, the mother had never heard um, Blind Boone. He had passed away before she was born. But she said, oh no, my daughter, we hear it, we've heard it several times. And she would name the song. And I thought, isn't that interesting? Well, I was telling that at a... Um, an event, and after the event, um, a woman came up, she had quite an elderly woman with her, and she introduced me to the daughter who was with this woman when they heard Blind Boone's ghost playing the piano. And if it didn't make the hair stand up on the back of your neck, I don't know what did. So where can we go to purchase your book? Well, the basic places, Amazon, um, Barnes & Noble, or the History Press. The Haunted Boone's Lick. Ghosts, Ghouls, and Monsters of Missouri's Heartland. Mary Collins Burrell wrote it. It's a great read, and it also just might be a great roadmap for your trip into the macabre. If you'd like to suggest a story for me to explore, or you know of a haunted place that you'd love to tell people about, send me an email, markinthedark at macabhill.com. I'd love to find out what you've been through, and perhaps we can share it with others. That's Mark in the Dark at macabhill.com. Up next in our last segment of Macabre Hill, we've got a tomb time tale asking us how do we love our mummy and then counting the ways. Plus, we'll put fresh meat on the table. A very cool action figure that wants his cake. Why don't you make like the scientist from The Fly and stick around? Help me! Help me! More on the way when Macabre Hill returns. <laughs> 